Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. You miss your old familiar friends, but waiting just around the bed. Hello everybody, welcome to Courageous Life Church. I'm the lead pastor, Brad Euler. It's good to have each and every one of you today. You know, there's a lot going on in our world, and uh, but we're gonna get through this. I want you to know that we have put together here at Courageous Life Church a sign that says, be courageous. You can put in your yards, come by the church, grab one. And we just want people to be courageous during this time. You know, CLC is about reaching families, building lives, and loving people. So we help us do that in our community. Let's pray before we start our service. Father, we love you. God, we need you in this place. God, I want you to reach into homes all over our city. Lord, I even heard there's people watching in Japan. And so, Lord, as you reach a world with this gospel, may they sense your presence during worship and during the message of the preaching of the gospel. And may people today find hope as our world unfolds in prophecy. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let's enter in. Good morning, CLC family. Would you go on ahead and stand to your feet in your homes? We're going to enter into a time of worship and open up into a time of prayer. Join with us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our homes this morning. Lord, I pray that you would fall. You would consume all of the issues we've been facing, Lord, the doubt, the uncertainty. And I pray that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would stir our families. Lord, that you would restore our families, restore our relationships. Lord, you would turn us back to you and to your heart. We're so thankful for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. And today we are expecting a move. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, sing with us this morning. Created from dust. You came and you lived among us. You took on our frame. You walked in our pain. And now you're taking us higher. You stepped into time. You laid down your life to save. You took on our shame, on the cross it was laid, and now you're taking us higher, as we go from glory to glory to glory. Come on, say, we'll, we'll never, never be, be the, the same. same, we'll, we'll never, never be the same. same. Come on, we go. We go from glory to glory to glory, and we're forever changed. We're forever changed. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, we're forever changed. Cause you call me a friend. Born into your endless kingdom. By the blood I was made. No longer a slave, and now you're taking us higher. Cause we go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. We go, we go from glory to glory to glory. 
We're forever changed. We're forever changed. Until we reach that day when love conquers everything. We're crying at the singing, holy, holy. And when we see that day, we're standing face to face. We're shouting at the singing, holy. Until we reach that day, love conquers everything. We're crying at them, singing, holy, holy. And when we see that day, we're standing face to face. We're shouting at them, singing, holy, holy. took on the grave yes you did Lord so not even death can shake us come on here it is cause the victor has won and heaven has come and now you're taking us higher and now you're taking us higher cause we come from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. You take, you take us higher and higher and higher. We're forever changed. We're forever. Come on, put your hands together. We go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. You take. Cause you take us higher and higher and higher We're forever changed We're forever changed We go We go from glory to glory to glory We go We go from glory to glory to glory You take You take us higher and higher and higher We're forever changed Come on, somebody in your home, give the Lord a shout of praise today. We're forever changed. We're forever changed. Forever changed. On somebody say that in your home right now. God, I'm forever changed by your love today. Somebody put it in the chat room right now that I'm changed by Jesus. No longer the same. Bought with a price today. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world today. And God stretches me. He takes me on a journey with him today. And I'm more than enough today for him. I give him glory today. I give you glory, Lord. God, I give you glory today, God, and I praise you. God, and I thank you today. Father, and over these next few moments, God, as we surrender our hearts and as we surrender our lives to you, Lord. Lord, would you come into each and every home? Lord, come into every room. Lord, come into every kitchen, every bedroom, every living room, every car, every job, Lord. Come into our home, Lord, and come into our hearts. To the one who gave it all for us. Father, we lift you high today.
spite of everything, would you raise a hallelujah today? In spite of a job loss, would you raise your hallelujah today? In spite of sickness, raise a hallelujah today. Cause I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I'll raise a hallelujah. It's louder than the unbelief. And I'll raise a hallelujah. Sing my weapon. My weapon is a melody. It's my praise. My raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive come on somebody shout in your home he's alive Cause I'll raise a hallelujah With everything inside of me And I'll raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee And I'll raise a hallelujah And I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. Come on, say. So I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive.
time since you worshiped the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands in your living room right now. Come on and lift your hands in your living room right now. Begin to exalt the name of Jesus. Some of you are coming out of bondages right now. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Come on, lift it up today. We are so glad to have you online in your homes. We uh, are looking forward to great things that God has done. I hope you enjoyed the praise and the worship. We know that the presence of the Lord is in your home today. And we thank you for joining joining us at CLC. And we want to right now just pray. If you have a prayer need, we're going to pray real quickly before we get into the word. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the hallelujah that we can raise up unto you. We thank you that you're good. And we thank you that your blessings are with us. And I pray, Lord, that if there's any amongst us that are sick, Lord, that you would touch their body. And Father, I pray for a multitude of people through this virus, Lord, that you will show yourself strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad to have you with us at Courageous Life Church. We just wanted to make mention that our children's program is posted at 3 p.m. every Sunday, so check back here again. And then our Crew 62 Youth Ministry is posted at 6 p.m. So if you have kids or teenagers, there are other programs for them today. We also have camp forms available. So for those of you parents who are wanting to send your children or teenagers to camp this summer, please see Pastor Danielle for children's and Pastor Ethan for youth. I also wanted to remind you, you have three ways to give at Courageous Life Church. You can still give online at our website. You just simply click on give here. The other thing that you can do is to mail your checks in to our physical address. And lastly, C 
simply and safely give on PayPal. Our email address is on the screen. We're so glad that you're here today. We miss you guys. We'll see you soon. Well, today we're going to jump right into it. A little story that I want to tell that leads to our passage. Let me give you a little background. Jesus came to town and he wanted to go to Martha and Mary's house. And Martha, when they entered the home, went, went to work to, to prepare the meal and get the house ready and just to have a good time. But Mary, she made her way to be by Jesus. Well, Martha being overwhelmed with what she thought was the most important thing, finally got so worked up that she went to Jesus and said, look at Mary, Jesus, make her help me, she's doing nothing. And in Luke chapter 10, we jump into this story, verse 41, and the master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much in getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential. And Mary has cho chosen it. It's the main course, and it won't be taken from her. I've entitled this message this morning, Teach Us What is Most Essential. Mary's choice, and it was so important to her, and it was the most es essential thing in her life was to sit at the feet of Jesus. It was the most important thing to do even above food and getting food ready. So even above serving, it was to her important to be right with God. And that's what's happening today in our world. As the teacher is showing what is the most essential thing to do and to trust right now and to have, in this world that we're in, is God. And it's still God. And God is enough. As I look at the word essential, it's indispensable. It's necessary. A must-have. You know, when I think about that, I must have God right now in our circumstances. Right in the middle of our problems in this world, we've got to have God right now. You know, we can live... And, and move and do a lot of things and trust in other things that are more important to us. We can look at the world around us and we can get by. But I'm not just wanting to get by. I'm talking about what's really essential. And I'm not talking about essential oils that maybe you rub on yourself and use and, and or anything like that. But what I'm talking about is in our world as it's evolving with COVID-19 and the pandemic, some of the first things you may think when you hear the word essential is they're first responders. And I praise God for, for doctors and nurses and the police and, and firefighters, the ambulance drivers, those that are on the front lines of this pandemic, giving and serving. They're amazing individuals. And if you're watching right now, I want to say thank you if you're a first responder. Hats off to you. A, a good applause to you. You are awesome. Thank you for your acts of service. And we respect you and thank you once again. But I want to move to something that I see that is most essential in our world that I, I hope that we're not missing. And there is three great essential truths that God has placed on this earth. And I want to go through them. And if you have your outlines with us that you download off our Internet. Number one, in the world right now, God is most essential. You know, God has saving power. That's what we need for our world with COVID-19. You know, I have some concerns, and, and I know you do too, and there's fear, and, and there's a lot of things that we need, and I know we need ventilators, and we need more gloves and more masks. To, to do the tasks that we need to do. We need more distance from one another to keep from spreading it. So there is some, some powerful things that we need, but what we truly need is the power of God in our lives. Matthew 10, 28. Do not fear those who kill the body, 
but are unable to kill the soul. But fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Do you see, this is why God is so important because he holds life and death in his hands. In reality, the most essential thing is that we should be saved. It's where we're going to spend eternity with. Because see, life is like a vapor. It's here one moment and then it's gone. Ephesians 4, 6 says, One God and Father of all, who is over everything and through everything, in everything. See, it's all in God's hands. He's, you're either got Him as Lord of all in your life or none at all. He also comes with His healing powers. And this is important, especially in COVID-19, because when the doctors are struggling and I heard uh, something the other day that was very alarming, that some people that were put on the ventilators shouldn't have been put on the ventilators. And because of it, they passed. And that kind of was really concerned me. But in Matthew 8, 3, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I will, I will be healed. And immediately the man was healed from his disease. Even though men and people think we have the answers and what we have prioritized as essential, if you will make God the most essential thing in your life, I believe there's nothing that could stop his outreach hand of healing. Now, see in your notes, miracle working power is another thing that he brings when he comes with the power of salvation. Matthew eleven three, 3, there was a question asked. It was asked by John the Baptist, who was in a prison. And he said, are you the one to come? Or should we expect someone else? I know there's a lot of people out there listening right now. You're looking for something else to help you. You're looking for other means of hope. Is there something on the planet, some kind of antidote? We need answers, but I'm telling you, all the answers can come back to God. And he sent the disciples back to them. And this is what he said. He said in Matthew 11, 5, the blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those that have leprosy are cleansed, did deaf ears, and the dead was raised, and the good news was proclaimed to the poor. I'm telling you, there's nothing more than important, nothing in the world more essential than God Himself. He has all the power that we need. You need a miracle today? Look no further. Jesus has the answer. Number two in your notes, there's nothing more essential in times like these than the church. I said that. God placed the church here in the world. And I know you're thinking right now, there is other things that is more essential right now than a church. You may think it's high V. Hey, a man's got to eat. We need food. I'm right with you. Uh, what well, price cutters got to be open dollar general you know so we can run by and pick something up real quick how about walmart you know we need to run by there and pick up everything else we need as well home depot uh, menards we see those in our world that they are essential and that's why they're open and that's why their parking lots are full of people and and you know i may say that andy's custard is important amen and i i was in line the other night and i know you saw me there Okay, I was there two nights. But, you know, these things are important, but I have to admit, uh, uh, there are some times that I just don't know what I'll do if, if Minsky's is not open. So I'm glad Minsky's is open. I go by and get me a big pizza. And see, there, there's all kinds of things that we deem as essential. But let's get serious again and see what Jesus said. In a pandemic like this, in troubled times like this, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, this is, was what the church was meant for. It was built 
for problems like this, for the storms of life like this. It's a foundation of hope. It's a, it's a lighthouse on a hill. And we will not hide it under a basket because in it is the body of Christ. So the church was made for problems like this. Hell can even set itself up against it and it will not prevail. The church will remain. The church is essential. I know these other businesses that I mentioned are so important and I know they help drive our economy and they have to be open so people can run in and buy all these things and I know this is COVID-19. COVID-19 is real and that people have been sick and I do think it was wise that we close our borders and put traveling bans out and we delegate to different cities and, and those authorities that be and, and place those social distancing in there but shame on it if it turns into some kind of political driven agenda and it has Roman motives that could to drive us into the hands of the devil where he is trying to blind this world but listen, because if that is happening, we'll need the church like never before in our communities. I'm saying we need the world to see this. And until the world sees it, the community will continue to suffer. We were here and did the mar marrying, the burying, and the dying, and the living, and working with the addicted, and working with the down and outers. And we have been feeding people a long time in the church. We have been the church. We are needed. I'm saying let, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. The enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold him down. The church that is bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. The world needs the church because we're equipped. We're ready to be mobilized. We're ready to adapt to help people. We're ready to feed and to care and like I said, we've been doing that from the beginning, way back. Jesus died for it. He established it. It's been here and it will stand a long time and it'll stand as long as Jesus wants it to. Jesus has kept the church because it is essential for life. Now listen, the faster you open the church building doors again, the faster we'll get on our feet as a nation. The faster we'll get better as a people. You know, as pastors and, and churches that may be listening, that you've passed by, we have to be smart about this and not dumb. If when we reopen, we, we can't be we can't be careless. We, we can't offend by getting too close to people. There, there's still some things that we need to adapt. And the church is good about adapting. We, we will never change our message, even though our methods may change. But we do not want to look like we don't care. Let's take the words and let's be led by the great teacher. Number three, the Bible is essential today because it is filled with prophecy unfolding for tomorrow. I understand it as I, as I research and listen that China is trying to close the doors on all churches. It's been an age old battle. And now they are presenting another church a Bible that they're trying to get the churches to accept. They rewrote it and it's got the stuff of communism and stuff that they want proclaimed in their world. And it's not God's word. Here are the facts found in God's word in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7. For the secret powers of lawlessness is already at work. That's the devil. And the devil has been at work to destroy He's trying to tear the churches apart. I know we, we've had a virus, and I know it's been threatening, but in the end results, it's to destroy and to try to close churches, and the devil's trying to take advantage of that. But the one who holds it back will continue to do so until it is taken out of the way. When I look at this passage, it tells me one thing. We're not going anywhere until God says so. 
We will be the church. We have always been the church. And we'll be the church in the future until Jesus calls the church home. Where are we going with this? Don't try to get us to change our gospel. Don't try to get us to close our doors because God will reopen us. The church, matter of fact, has never closed. It's always been open. We've prayed for the sick. We prayed for the nation. We've reached out through social media. We did it through our phones. The church never sleeps and we are constantly at work. We are the body of Christ and we don't need a building to call us the church, but it is where we gather and God says in Hebrews that we're not to forsake the gathering of gather of saints. As the day draws close. I know six foot is important to keep us apart. But we were not apart. We were part of a universal body of Christ all over the world. And we were connecting because of the God we serve. We were connecting through prayer. And with the same heart and mind and the same spirit. And the worldwide church will arise. Matthew 10 and verse 7. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you receive, freely you give. You must know always that God's word is constantly under attack, but it is able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We can not stand without his word. We can't stand without the, the, the holy word, the Bible. We, you can't take that from us. Even though we have seen other nations try to take the Bible, other worlds here on earth that has, has tried to take the Bible and destroy it and to stomp out the Word of God. But Psalms 119 is 11 for the believers listening today. As we come towards the last day, it's I have hidden the Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Have you ever thought about operating without the Bible? Have you ever thought about someone taking our devices and jamming the network so we can't see it on the social network, on the, on the internet? Have you ever thought about people going house to house and taking the Bibles out and, and burning them in a pile? That's why it's important, people, that we put the Word of God in our heart, that we don't sin against God. It has to be deep in there. It's most essential. Let me just say this, as these times approaching and next week, I'm going to be preaching more on the last day and how things are unfolding. And so you want to tune into that. But let me just say this. If you haven't been frequent into the word of God, if you haven't known and studied and got in involved with the Bible and know it really good, then you're going to be in a dead run to catch up with it as prophecy unfolds. First Peter 3, verse 11 in the Message Bible says everything here today might well be gone tomorrow. Do not see how essential it is to live a holy life. Don't you see it? Daily expect that the day of God eagerly for its ar arrival. The galaxies will burn up with the elements melted down that day, but we'll hardly notice it. We'll be looking for the other way, ready for the promise of the new heavens and the new promise of a new earth and the landscape with righteousness. Oh, there's a day coming. What a day that will be when we see Jesus. What a day that will be. If you're listening right now, I'm going to go ahead and, and end the service. I know you have many things to do, but don't turn that off until you receive Jesus Christ. Today, I've talked about things that are so essential, but there's nothing more important 
Nothing more important than knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you're home right now just caught in this whole pandemic thing and the stay-at-home thing like we've been talking about and we're watching everything unfold, you know, we want you to be informed, but don't be confused. God's still on the throne. God's still alive and well. God still knows how to fix everything. He has, you know what? There's nothing new in God's word. He put it there for our hope, for our guidance. So if you're with me today, let me just stop and say, if you need Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray this, say, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for every one of them on a cross. And the third day you rose again. So now that you, so I can have life and life more abundantly. You confess with your mouth that you have sinned and accepting now as your Savior, in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer. You pass unto death unto life. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are born again. It's the most essential thing in your life, that decision you just made. Praise God for that. Contact our church. Let us know that. And we'll, we'd like to visit with you more about that. And for those that are home that are struggling, let's put God first as the most important thing. I know it's important those stores are there. But more important that God is there. And he'll be a friend, the Bible says, closer than any brother. Lord, be with our people that are, that are still in this lockdown. And, but, but their hearts are not locked down. Their, their, their minds are not on lockdown. Spiritually, they're not locked down. They can call upon you and you'll answer. Rescue them today. Encourage them today. Give them joy. Give them a peace that surpasses all understanding because you're God and we are not. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Stand to your feet if you're in your homes. Get excited because our worship team's coming back and let's end this thing with praise.
So everybody say, your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit, your spirit lives within me. Sing my victory, my victory. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit, your spirit lives within me. Oh, in my victory, in my your spirit, your spirit lives within me. So I will walk. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit, your spirit lives within me. Say my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory.
Come on, say your spirit. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. for joining us today you know there's so much information out there and so many things transpiring in our world today I want you to be informed but not confused let's work in the moment and don't panic about the future we're in God's hands and he's got everything in his control let's trust him today he is essential he is all we need see you next week